Where I Came From by Elizabeth Brewster is a poem that is used to compare the people she's met and herself in their upbringing and what has made them who they are and the places they visit, the places they both grew up in and discuss whether this is better or worse. She has the key thesis statement at the start. People are made of places. This is what she wants to get at. People were affected by the surroundings and this is the summary of the poem. They carry with them hints of jungles or mountains or tropic grace or the cool eyes of sea gazers. Atmosphere of cities, how different drops from them, like the smell of smog or almost not smell of tulips in the spring. Nature tidily plotted in little squares with a fountain in the centre. Museum smell, art so tidily plotted with a guidebook. Or the smell of work, glue factories maybe, chromium plated offices, smell of subways, crowded at rush hours. The main points you want to look at here are the sterile and man-made ideas and the artificiality of the city brought about due to the metaphors, nature tidily plotted in little squares, as you can imagine some, something so conform, applying to the rules in little squares, with a fountain in the centre. Here, a man-made object is taking away the beauty of nature. It is in the centre of what people want to see, what the people who have designed this city, this urban world, want you to see. You've also got the idea here of smog and then the almost not smell of tulips. She's saying that she doesn't like where the people she's grown up have met. The people that she's met in cities aren't necessarily the people that she likes, maybe, and she doesn't like where they've come from. She doesn't go into detail about the jungles of the mountains. She doesn't like urban nature. The smell of work, glue factories, maybe. Smell of subways at crowded rush hour, all disgusting smells. And chromium plated offices. He clearly shows that she doesn't like this. Although it can be seen as positive, she doesn't like it. She's surrounded it with negative views. Then you've got the change from the first and the second stanza, the people she's met, to her own. But there's one slight change in the structure of the start of the second stanza. The first line doesn't fit the margin. It actually flows on from the first stanza. So it's not as if she wants you to pause and reflect on what's going on there. As she doesn't seem to deem it so great. She prefers where she grew up. Where I come from, people carry woods in their minds. Acres of pine woods. Blueberry patches and burnt out brush. This is the description of the people you've come across. The people and their lifestyle. Maybe pine farmers. Blueberry patches. So they take for themselves, they grow and care for themselves and their families. Wooden farmhouses old in need of paint, with yards of where hens and chickens circle about, cl clucking aimlessly. So this shows the random nature, not the tightly packed in squares, but the random nature, the clucking aimlessly. They can do what they want, they feel free in nature. Also, wooden half farmhouses old in need of paint, it shows that these have clearly been used and used for their purpose, what they were designed for. Battered schoolhouses, once again, battered, but they've been used. These nostalgic images are what she likes. Behind which violets grow. Behind all this nature, uh, behind all this batteredness, there's nature. Beautiful violets grow. Spring and winter are the mine's chief seasons. These are where the main changes occur. Ice and the breaking of ice. Winter, ice, spring, the breaking of ice. This can be related to it as though how ice can be seen as the urban world. Something so rigid. <laughs> ice is represented and rigid and conform, so applying to what urbanisation has necessarily done. And then the breaking of ice, something that she likes to say that she does and occurs in her hometown. The breaking of these new urban ideas and it's showing a step out of the seclusion and a move away that can occur if you just open your mind up and change your personality. And then there's a final, a final shorter two line stanza. A door in the mind blows open, and there blows a frosty wind from fields of snow. Metaphor about her memories is what I've noted down next to my poem. But this can be two metaphors. It can be the metaphor about the crazy brainwave that she's had, and now is reflecting on all these memories, saying, oh, I used to wake up in the morning and open up my door to these fields of snow, how beautiful. Or it can be shown, there's a negative effect. The urban world is attacking and taking over. 
and a frosty wind. She is scared of the effects that it might have in the future.